Today we'll be comparing a £30 Ultimate Rinse Cup to my scabby old mug. Which is better? Stick around, because spoiler alert, I've actually found a product that's better than both of them. Enjoy! <laughs> So as we get to know each other, you'll discover I'm actually pretty careful with my money. Just don't look at the minis. So the thought of spending £30 on a paint cup was pretty ludicrous. But I saw it and thought, how much better can a £30 paint cup actually be? And now I'm a rich and famous YouTuber. <laughs> I thought I'd give it a go. It's a great video, if nothing else. It's actually more interesting than it sounds. And I actually learned quite a lot. So stick around and we'll explore the various bits and pieces that go along with having a paint cup and how it compares to what is essentially an old mug. To be fair, I'm very much of the opinion that a brush is a tool to be used and, you know, once it once it's passed its sort of perfect best, it will get relegated into the sort of the seconds bin for brushing and texturing and all sorts, all the, all the rest of those sort of bits and pieces like that. In fact, grab this. This is a Citadel Fine Detail brush. I have had this brush, I was trying to work it out the other day, I have had this brush for 22 years. It's not the best, but it's 22 years old, and it's still just about usable. So without further ado, let's get into some practical demonstrations and show you just how good a £30 paint cup actually is. This is a mug. You've all seen a mug before, I don't need to tell you about it. Other than the fact that the good points about this thing are it's super cheap, you probably got an old mug you're not using anymore knocking around your house, you can just go and get one. I'm pretty much going to call this free. Because everyone's got mugs in their house, they're easy to get hold of, so therefore you can pick them up wherever you're painting, easy to get hold of. I usually think, I usually think the best tools to have are the ones you have at the time. Because the most important thing about painting miniatures is just painting miniatures. So whatever enables you to do that in the easiest way possible is probably going to be the best thing for you. Listen, if you're liking the content, don't forget to subscribe and like the video. If you want to see something else, comment down below or follow me on Instagram at Rising8Minis. Amazing. Thank you so much. That being said, if you're looking to upgrade something like this, and I've used this for a couple of years without any issues, but there are some bad points to it too. If you're looking to upgrade, then I've got some other options for you as well. Some of the bad points of using a mug are it's really tempting to just leave your brush in it like that, but... That's really bad practice because it bends the bristles on the mug. It also puts your bristles in all the sediment you get collecting in the bottom of the mug. And also there's a tendency when you're constantly wiping up and down the smooth sides of the mug or doing all this sort of stuff or doing all this sort of stuff, you're constantly putting that extra pressure and damage to your brush. So there are some bad things, but you can get over that with a bit of common sense. Like everything, if you're going to have something that's really cheap, it's not going to be absolutely perfect. There's always going to be a workaround. There's always going to be a compromise with tools like this. But if you're just starting out, nothing wrong with just using a mug from the kitchen. Right, the real star of the video, that little chap. It's made by a company called Paint Puck. Um, you can pick them up off Amazon. I got this one for about £30. It's called the Ultimate Rinse Cup. I don't think it actually lives up to the name. It's good, don't get me wrong, but is it £30 good? No, I don't think so. That being said, I don't want to be completely unfair about this. There are some really good features about it. There's a little rubber you can use as a palette down the bottom. That's what it's, that's what they say it's for. <sighs> yeah, I mean, I've already got a palette. I don't need a palette. Um, and I'm not sure I'd use a flimsy bit of silicon to mix up paint. But it could it could be useful here and there for just dabbing and doing bits and pieces and just, you know, there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with that per se. The other cool feature it has are these things around the edges. These are little um, brush grips. So you can larger size brushes or because it's silicon you can just squeeze them in just hold your brushes in place that's really neat little feature stops you like being tempted to drop it inside the other thing you can do is you can use the, obviously the same things down here so you can keep your bristles just fit in and you can see the bristles just held above there nice and tight it's actually pretty strong so yeah that's super useful another cool feature these are these little um lips can you see these on here and edges here what that does is it just means that as you drag your brush across here you can squeeze off the excess water as you're doing it works really well because it's silicon it works almost well pretty much exactly the same as a squeegee so yeah that's really useful for extracting all that water and then finally 
I think this is probably my least favourite thing about the brush, but it's probably its main selling point too. Down here, you can see the... Uh, yeah, I d can't tell you how much I dislike that. It should come with like a parental advisory sticker, that thing. Um, it's deeply unpleasant to look at, and it feels horrendous to use too. But it is quite gentle on the bristles of the brush, and I can it is effective at cleaning brushes. So it does its job, it's just, yeah, not for me, thank you very much. But then again, dull world if we're all the same, right? Another cool thing about this is for cleaning it down, um, you, I don't actually know whether you can probably throw a dishwasher, but it is silicon, so I would imagine you can. But as you can see, you can just take it all completely to bits and really easy to clean. So it comes apart completely, means you can store it, put it back in its box, whatever. You can, because it's silicon, you can bend it, flex it, get into all those little bits and pieces, get everything a nice clean out. That's quite fun. That's quite satisfying, actually. And then put it all back together. So it goes together as easily as it came apart. It's a little bit more fiddly. Pop. And then... Pop. And it's back together again. That is quite nice, to be fair. But if I'm going to be honest, as I said at the beginning of the video, I've actually found something better than both of them. While I was researching this video, I happened to be scrolling through at Amazon looking for paint cups, as you do when you're a grown man. And I came across that. That's made by Faber and Castle. And they come in a pack of two for five pounds. It is exactly what it says it is. A Faber and Castle click and go water cup. So that's the second one, which I haven't opened yet. I've been using that one for the last two or three weeks now. I have absolutely fallen in love with it. It's sort of a compromise between the two. So it's a compromise between a bog standard straight up water cup and a... Uh, ultimate rinse cup but it's really portable so when you want to go just pop it out fill it with water and then away you go There's nothing fancy about it so it doesn't have any of the fancy little um silicon inserts which you can use to scrape your brush but you can buy those separately i'll put links down in the description probably my favorite thing about it though is this my desk has an ever so slight angle on it and if i just leave my brush on top it doesn't have a fancy silicon grip but it does have these little wrinkles around the edge which stop my brush rolling off my cup if I show you on my paint cup, if I show you on my paint cup, that is super annoying. I have to be really careful. If I just pop it down, it's got any forward motion on it at all, it rolls off. On this one, it doesn't. I can't tell you how useful that is. As I say, I'm quite mean, so I'm quite drawn to the price. I said that's essentially £2.50. Um, super storable. I've actually bought some more because my kids use them for art as well. You pop them away, sling it in your tool bag, take it with you. Super light, super easy, not very bulky. Definitely, that is the ultimate paint cup for me. So right, here are our three options. So we're going to stick some water in and do a quick test and I'll show you what they do. So right. We're just going to use our paint cups to rinse some of my paint off this. For this test, I'm just using a Citadel Abaddon, Abaddon Black, fairly ubiquitous colour. It's one not one I use a lot, which is why I'm not um, worried about wasting the paint on it. I um, had to bottle. So I'm literally just going to pop some paint. See that one? So I've got some paint on the end of the brush. I'm just going to wipe that down as if I'd done some painting with it. First one, test with the paint cup. Pull our mug up. And you can see just on the end there, sorry, it's not a very clear camera, but you can see just on the end there's still a touch of paint left on that. It's not so much that it'll bother us, we can still go back in and go over the top of it or wipe it off on some tissue paper, but it's not got it absolutely perfect. I'm going to go back in again, paint on the brush. Paint on the room that, I'll have to make sure I clean that off, otherwise the paint pot won't seal and then it'll all dry up again. The joy of Citadel pots. So I've got some paint on the brush, and I'm literally just gonna same again with this one. 
because there's a few extra ridges in the bottom of this cup, and I'll do some different angles too, um, because there's um, some ridges in the bottom of this silicon, I can actually use those to wipe a little bit more of the paint off, and then tap it off. And because, again, it's got slightly sharper edges on these rims here, so I can use that to drag the excess paint off. And it's almost... It's got most of the paint off, to be fair. So that's actually not too bad. It's got, it's got it cleaner than it did before. So now we're going to try it with exactly the same thing again. So each time with these tests, I've started with a wet brush because I got it wet before I started, even with the paint mug test. So a glob of paint on the end, and then we're just going to... This one's quite nice for the camera, at least, because at least you can see through it and see what's going on. So that's got it to about the stage of the other two. So nearly clean, not quite clean. There's no there's no um, ridges inside the pot, so I'm not able to do wipe it along the sides. But I am able to use our parental advisory um, silicon additions and just wipe gently over those. And we'll see what difference they make. So that's pretty good. And again, you're able to use these silicon ridges to really scrape the edge of the water off like a squeegee and it li you can literally see the water beading at the end and then being pulled off the brush so and then you end up with a nice clean brush again so in terms of which is most effective at cleaning a brush this one absolutely hands down this one so money no object you want to go and buy a rinse cup that's actually going to clean your brushes really effectively buy the ultimate rinse cup it does do its job if you don't want to spend 30 pound don't okay so where did all this end up basically if you're just starting out and you don't have another one around use an old mug it'll be fine you just have to make some compromises if budget's no option Go for this one. It's pretty good, it's just expensive. But my advice would be buy this one. £2.50, it's an amazing paint cup and it's got a couple of nifty little features that make it really cool. Links are down in the description below, thanks for watching. Thank you so much for tuning into this last video and for listening to me waffle on about paint cups for the last 10 minutes. If you've stuck it out, you're an absolute legend. Thank you so much. If you haven't already, subscribe, like the video, and comment down below. I have been absolutely blown away by the last month on YouTube. I've only been here for a month, so thank you for all the people who've supported the video so far. I've got nearly 50 subscribers now. Every single one of you means so much to me. Genuinely blown away by how successful I've been so far. Um, if you are liking the videos, Make sure you tune in and give us comments and give us feedback. You can find me on Instagram at Rising8Minis or you can leave a comment down in the video below. Check out some of the old videos too. Some of them are a bit janky but I'm learning as I go. So by all means if you've got suggestions about how I can improve my content, chuck them down in the comments below. I'll always respond. Yeah. Thank you so much for your support so far.